forward to it. Lastly, if I could just get your thoughts, obviously, you know, Staples Center, the last fight at Staples Center just took place, Javante Davis against Isaac Cruz. Did you have a chance to maybe go to the fight or tune in? Yeah, I did. I did watch, and uh, Isaac Cruz gave a hell of a fight. Great performance. He, uh, I think, he surprised a lot of people who didn't really um, know what to expect for him or, or didn't really know what he can do. What was the one thing that surprised you for me? I said, Cruz, because a lot of people, he was, you know, underdog. We're not expecting this type of performance. Not much less be able to take those big shots from Javante Davis. What, what surprised you for me? Sorry. What surprised me about him was. Um was his defense, the way he was able to keep his hand in the position to block Gervonta's uppercuts and, and right hands, hooks, you know, a lot of different punches he was able to block with his defense and the way he was using his head to try to get inside. Um, that's what impressed me the most about him. Obviously, you have a great boxing mind. You know, the 135, it's stacked with talent. You have Ryan Garcia there from Lopez, who, you know, if he stays at 135, most likely not. Combosos, Haney, Tank. I mean, you know, the list goes on and on. Will and Cepeda also with Golden Boy. You know, what, what do you think is the dream matchup for a fight fan to see between all these names? Um, I definitely think everybody would love to see Javante Davis versus Ryan Garcia. Um, that's a that's a huge fight at 135, and there's so many talented fighters. And now, <laughs> uh, Cambo says uh, changed the the whole divisions with his performance and and being the underdog and defeating uh, Tiafimo. So I'm excited to see what matchups are to come in that division. Is there a one you want to see? I mean, uh, we, I mean, we could even throw Shakur Stevenson into the mix. You know, he's a big 130. He could definitely go up to 135. Yeah, yeah. I think um, I would like to see. Just Ryan and Gervonta, that's the main fight first that I would like to see. But, of course, with Ryan being inactive, um, I don't know when we'll see that. But, yeah, I hope Ryan gets back in there. I'm excited to watch him fight again. I mean, five fans definitely won Ryan since to make a comeback. Uh, from what you saw on Sunday night, do you think there's holes in, the, in, in Gervonta's game that Ryan Garcia could capitalize? Um, I mean... No fighter's perfect. I think there's holes in Ryan, there's holes in Javante, there's holes in, in every fighter that, that you, if you really study and you really want to um, make them pay for it, you definitely can. I mean, obviously, you're a big star in boxing. You know, Krupisa Cloyster Shields, you know, go, obviously go to, go to uh, MMA, loss. Uh, you know, is there a chance that maybe down the line, you know, that for you to cross paths and maybe jump into the octagon? Um, I have thought about it before, but... Um, then I just think of how much I still have to accomplish in boxing. So um, right now my mind's just totally focused on winning those world titles first. And then we'll see. You never know. <laughs> yeah, a lot of boxing media do recognize you as one of the best pound-for-pound -pound fighters, you know, and male or female. But a lot of times, like, ESPN doesn't have you up there. You know, what do you think you have to do? Is it more like politics or, you know, obviously because when you look at what you have accomplished, there's no doubt that you're, right. you know. Yeah, yeah. And, and I was saying this in my previous interviews yesterday because they keep bringing up the pound for pound list and asking me, you know, where do I think I should be? And I never really paid attention to the list before until um, I think it was like in November. I was like, um, they finally had me at like number nine. And then I looked at the at the um, at the uh, at the list of names who are like the boxing experts who say that you can that you're on the list or whatever yeah and i read those names and of course i'm not going to say which names but there was some names in there that i was just like how the how does this person have authority to say who is on the women's pound for pound list and where they belong this person doesn't know shit honestly uh and and i think it's just um yeah like you said the politics of boxing people in charge of the pound for pound list that shouldn't be um and I never really, I still don't worry about it. Like, I'm just, I'm doing my thing. I, I'm, I'm making myself better every fight, um, perfecting my skills, and continuing to win world titles. Like, my talent can't go unseen on pound for pound list. So, I'll get there, yeah. <laughs> well, lastly, what message do you have to everybody who's going to be buy, buying a ticket and tuning in on the zone December 18th? This is a must watch for TV. Yeah, tune in December 18th on the zone, co main event. Huge for women's boxing. I, I, I just feel so blessed to be with the biggest promoter in boxing and to be on a platform like DAZN representing women's boxing as the co main event. So you don't want to miss it. Tune in to support. Thank you. Those are the words of three division world champions, Anissa Strata. Thank you so much. Thank you.